Uh, so I, I was asked by uh, your chef to talk about uh, the basics of culinary importance. So, uh, you know, when, when you're born as a child in this world, your parents teach you a few basics at home, and then you are sent to a nursery school, then to a KG school, and then you go to a primary and then secondary, and then you go to college or university. So culinary world is no different. Uh, some of us learn a lot of things at home, uh, but you do go to a proper school, a proper culinary school, where you learn your basics, and then you start your journey in the industry. Now, some people like to do it that way, and some people do it not in that traditional manner. They just jump into the industry and work their way up. Both are right, in my opinion. I, I couldn't take sides on this. However, there's a massive difference uh, between two persons who would have taken two different routes. So uh, I would always advocate that if you have the means to go through your proper education, proper basics, you should do that because it's a structured education. When you go through a uh, kind of experience-led uh, path, then you do learn, no doubt about it, but then your self-motivation comes into play and you have to work, you have to be a lot more stronger mentally and physically and emotionally to go through everything and achieve what you want to achieve. Some people do that and I, I admire and commend because one of the person who I learned a lot of craft from uh, is uh, Chef Jerome Gomes, who I hold up quite high in my in my regards and in my heart and my thoughts. Uh, he, was, he was a self-taught chef. Nothing wrong with that. But on the other side, we had uh, I had some amazing teachers uh, like Chef Vrinda Singh Narula, uh, Chef Inder Dhawan, uh, Chef Saswat from Taj, uh, Chef Manjit Singh Gill in ITC, who who have had an uh, amazing path, a trailblazing path. Uh, who they, they started from the basics. They went to culinary schools. Uh, they they came to ITC Taj or wherever they went, and they went to their training schools, and then. Then they practice their craft, work with several other chefs on the way to become what they became in finally. So they, they are the illuminaries of our uh, industry and our life. Uh, and I don't think anything can teach you better uh, or prepare you better than the structured education. And I'm not saying that you should not venture uh, out of the structured education as well, because in your young age, you, your mind is like an elastic. The more you stretch, the more you're going to absorb. It's like a sponge. The more you can take, the better it is. And I, I'm 50 plus now. I still feel that there is so much need for me to learn and I keep craving to go back to certain basics that I want to learn again. And I pick up my old, old books and go through them all the time. But then I, at, this, at this age, I have craving for other cultures uh, and other cuisines. So I'm dwelling into a lot of Peruvian food these days, a lot of Japanese food, because there's so much to learn. There is so much out there. Uh, I, I just cannot absorb everything in one lifetime. So, and if you don't have the basics, uh, I think putting those blocks together would be very tough. You, you've got to learn uh, how to chop well. You've got to learn how to make your roux well. You've got to learn how to make your stocks well. You've got to learn your basics about your own culinary, culinary heritage, which is Indian. And how do you define Indian food? That becomes a big tough subject because we are such a diversified country. Uh, there are so many things to put in one bag in one lifetime, which won't be enough. So the more basics you brush now at this stage, the better you're going to be. It's very tempting out there to look at chefs on Instagram, chefs on TikTok, uh, or, or whatever platforms they are, or even, even normal TV that they are practicing their crafts at the height of their profession where they are. But trust me, they have practiced that for thousands of years before they got there. But they know their basics really well. And one example I'll give you who you should look up to is Chef Gordon Ramsay. That guy can talk a lot, but he cooks a storm whenever he's, he's with the knife and when he's the pan, you, you have to watch him, that how passionate he is. The words splutter out of his mouth Sometimes there's no relation what's going in the pan and what he's saying, but watch his skills, guys. I don't think I have kind of been impressed with anybody else than the way I have been with him. I've been very lucky to watch him closely, 
but I'm sure there are millions of his uh, videos out there which you can watch him that the way he conducts himself. And I'm not I'm not trying to push you to become his character, but I'm trying to push you to be greedy like him for knowledge. He he likes to suck up everything, whatever knowledge is given to him, he is happy to take that. And and that's the that's the way world should work in my opinion. And especially uh, if somebody asked me that what well, one thing you would do if you were given 20 years back in your life or you could start all over again, I, I think I would go back and spend a lot more time practicing those basic crafts and also spending a lot more time in my library sucking up all that knowledge. Because in, in this day also, I look back and think, I wish I had spent a little more time with the pastry chef. I wish I had practiced a little bit more of baking all those things which I find as a kind of weaker side of my profession in me, I feel that I should have spent a little bit more time. So there are regrets, no doubt about it, but that's human life. We, we will not succeed in everything. Anything else I can tell you guys? Uh, Chef, you have talked about Instagram. There are so many uh, culinary techniques uh, which the students uh, during their graduation, they see and they aim for that. Uh, be it molecular gastronomy or any other advanced culinary techniques. So what is your take on that? Whether the students should go for uh, these kind of techniques in the very uh, uh, basic or fundamental year of their graduation or is it for the later stage? Uh, I'm presuming this course is for three years, right? Four years, Chef, four years. Four years. So, you know, uh, I, I would break it down that, yes, there is no harm in practicing some of the crafts you watch on Instagram or whichever social media platform. And while you are in a very contained environment of your school, and if your school allows you to do that, you, there's no harm in doing it. But let me tell you, when I was growing up, uh, you, you have molecular gastronomy. Uh, that time, Nouvelle Cuisine was in vogue when, when I was a young trainee chef. And like you guys, the way I'm sure you guys are all attracted towards molecular gastronomy, I was quite attracted towards Nouvelle Cuisine. And I used to constantly think that, how can I take my kind of food into Nouvelle Cuisine? I look back and I think how wrong I was. Instead of actually broadening my uh, horizon, instead of pushing my boat out with my own culture and my cuisine, I was trying to bring something which was actually not suitable at all for Indian food. Though I practice modern Indian food, but I do practice modern Indian food, based on strong Indian ethos. I, I create dishes driven from my culture. I don't, I don't go out and bring a French dish and convert it to make it Indian. I don't do that. I take an Indian dish and create a modern experience out of it. That's how I have kind of cultivated my craft and I've gone on to do that. So molecular gastronomy, as far as world is concerned, it's dead. None of us actually practice it. None of us look at it. Uh, there are funky methods, uh, the smoke coming out and the gas coming out and the, uh, you consume the food right from the frozen stage straight into your mouth and enjoy it. Those are part of culinary experiences. It will become a very small, a very minuscule part of, very small part of your total meal experience and you might use them here and there. Uh, I'll give you an example if I'm, I'm uh, making a dessert, let's say rubbery and ras malai. Uh, I, I would create a kind of crunch in there or maybe create a frozen uh, element to it, which, which could be driven from molecular gastronomy. But no way I'm going to make my Ras Malai and Rabdi based on molecular gastronomy principles. There's no need for it. To elevate the experience of eating and, uh, and to open the mind and challenge the palate in a new way, that's what I would love to do. But to rubbish the recipe, which uh, our ancestors, perhaps our culture has driven for many thousands of years, I'm not going to shelve it. I'm going to use it. I'm going to enhance it. I'm going to use more techniques to make it better. But I'll keep the core of what Rabri and Ras Malai should be. I have one question, Chef. Yeah. Um, life is not a bed of roses. In fact, uh, one has to go through various ups and downs and uh, face many situations which are difficult in life. And I'm sure you also must have done that and please tell us in fact the students are also there as to how you overcame all of them to become what you are today <laughs> so uh you know if if life was, was bed of roses then i think we we all wouldn't be working so hard would we 
uh, and uh, I I remember that uh, in the young years when and it it happens to everybody that you know we have we have busy days we have hectic days and we have lazy days and I often used to uh, talk to my father and is to say you know why do we have to work so hard as human race while others other species in the world have so so much easy and uh, his his view was very simple he he's he said look you know we wouldn't be ruling the planet if we weren't the superior race that's one thing and part of success and failure is is going to be always be there for you you you, you would have to face it if you are successful today your downtime will come you will go down there's no way that you're going to remain on the peak all your life and if you're right at the bottom of it no way you're going to remain there you will come to the peak so you got to wait for your time and you have to work through your your time if you just feel that okay i'm, I'm at the bottom and i can do nothing and you just stop swimming and you stop putting your limbs out there to get to the top nobody's going to drag you there is nobody no rescue system in our whole ecosystem which will bring you to top you have to work your way up so you have to work hard incredibly hard and you have to remain focused you would have to all the way through your life and if you chunk it i this is how i do it i i cut chunks in my life that 3 years to 5 years uh, lead time i give for every every work i want to do and i i work my way through that nothing can be achieved overnight you have to work a plan out that what you want to achieve and if you don't have a plan you will never achieve anything so when when i came to the uk uh, i it, it wasn't that i set out to become a michelin star chef i looked up to the michelin star chefs and i used to think how cool it is uh, to be a michelin star chef hopefully i'll i'll become one one day and then what i used to do on on my days off which i used to get two days off here in the uk i used to go and work in these michelin star chefs restaurants for free i worked as a commie i worked sometimes i worked as a pot scrubber i worked in marco pia white's kitchen as as a as a pot washer for quite some time on my days off while i was the head chef of another restaurant uh, which was just bang opposite to his restaurant but i had no shame in doing that because standing there uh, while i was scrubbing the pots i could see that what was going on in the kitchen i could carry all that knowledge back into my kitchen and apply to my own food and perhaps that's what won me the michelin star eventually working with these fantastic chefs and i i look up to them still look up to them uh, with great love and affection because they have taught me so much Thank you, thank you, Chef. That was a very nice run. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, perhaps. So, Chef. Um, we have can we ask the students yeah. to have? One? Yeah, Sunil, Chef. Can we ask the students? Can we open the forum for the students? Sure, sure. Because they have been waiting for the moment for a very, very long time. Let's not keep the distance yes. between Chef and them. Yes, we have students from our first year going all the way to our third year. The final year batch as of now of BSc. So the forum is okay. open for the forum is open for all of you. Please ask your questions. I guess Shorya just messaged a nice question he wanted to ask Chef. Shorya, let's start from you only. He's here. Shorya. Okay, can okay. we? Yes, can we have questions? We ask the question is right here. When when can a chef uh, can say that he is successful, or he has reached, or he has arrived? When can he say that? <laughs> I don't know. You know, uh, different people would have uh, different ambitions. Right? Uh, I, I'm I'm very hard on myself. Uh, I don't I don't measure success in terms of achievement. Uh, I I measure success in terms of how people around me feel about our work. But mainly my team. I'm a team focused guy. Uh, keeping keeping good tabs and keep making sure that everybody is well fed and looked after, healthy, safe, happy. I think that's what my measure of success is. Uh, I I don't measure my success based on restaurants uh, or amount of money I take home every month or every year. I think it's different for different people. Uh, I, I'll tell you a, a story about another chef friend of mine. Uh, his name is Jason Atherton, amazing chef, and he used to work for Chef Gordon Ramsay. Uh, used to run a very successful restaurant called Maze. And uh, once, uh, when when he left Maze, 
to start his own. Uh, me and Jason went out for a drink to celebrate that he was going to start his new restaurant. So he, uh, he said, I, I got the formula really worked up. Uh, I think what I want to achieve in my life is to have just four restaurants. And I think that will put a big smile on my face and I'll, be, I'll, I'll find myself to be hugely successful. Several years later, uh, I, I just opened a restaurant bang opposite to him uh, where his main restaurant is social. It's called Fallen Street Social. So I caught up with him again and I said, okay, can you remind me how many restaurants you had said you will be happy with and that will put a big smile on your face and you'll feel worth a million dollar person. He said, uh, what did I tell you? It was four or 40. So his his goalpost has moved. He, he's, he owns about 20 plus restaurants. But you know, as time goes by, his goalpost has changed. Not that he's greedy. Uh, what he's driven by is uh, he is driven by uh, the more number of restaurants he's being able to open. And it's not only the money that helps you open more restaurants or make your empire bigger. It's the people. He's fortunate enough to have incredible amount of chefs, very talented chefs, working with him and paving the way to open more and more restaurants for him. And that's how he's becoming successful. So another thing which I'll tell you guys that uh, success is not a destination. Uh, it, it's a journey, OK? So you, you have to stay on course, uh, stay true to yourself, uh, keep achieving a little bit every day, and keep thinking that you will you will get on with this life and you will do it really well. So don't don't think of in terms of goals. Think in terms of having a fantastic journey because journey is as as important as the goal itself. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank Next you. Question. Can we ask some more questions, please? Uh, so, Nali, you can unmute and ask the question, please. Yes. Hello, sir. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Uh, sir, so I'm a third year student right now. So I would want okay. to know when I, uh, when you hire a chef in your restaurant, uh, especially the Michelin star, uh, what are the qualities do you look forward in that person when you're hiring? So I, I often, uh, in, in, in the introductory interview, I always try to understand person's passion for the food passion for the industry. Uh, obviously, I will quiz their technical knowledge. And when it comes to trade test, it's been my principle, and I'm well known for that, that I often ask people to cook a three-course vegetarian meal for me. And I, I judge them quite a lot. It's a kind of 30, 70. So 30 would be the interview part, and the 70 would be your cooking skills in my kitchen. And I strongly believe that if somebody can handle vegetarian food well, will be able to eat the non-vegetarian food very easily because vegetables have got a very delicate flavor. To be able to harness the strength and uh, essence of that flavor is is the key to success, in my opinion. Thank you, sir. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Any other Good evening, sir. Good evening. Sir, my name is Ananya. And my question to you is, what is more important um, for the chef to learn, cooking technique or ingredient knowledge? I would say both. Because if you don't know your ingredients, uh, your cooking techniques will be quite useless. So uh, I'll give you a very simple example. If you were cooking a fish, uh, something like salmon, if you don't know at what temperature the meat of salmon will get cooked or coagulate, the protein will coagulate, and you have the world-class culinary technique on you, it's not going to help you. So until unless you, you know your ingredient, uh, techniques actually don't matter. You will learn your techniques through the ingredients. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other question, chef? Hi, good evening. Uh, this is Tanya from second year. And I want to ask that uh, which is the one dish that you think got you your Michelin star? I I don't think I created it like that. It is any dish which made me 
commission has that value very high. And I, I don't think uh, I the mission has that either. I tell my own team skill as one person got the mission star. What gets a restaurant mission star or a chef is mission star is his team. So as the leader of the team, uh, for me to be able to work with my team members, uh, to be able to uh, push them to do their best. So I, I've, I've always been the believer in this, that everybody has got good and bad in them in terms of skill. And as a leader, I've always been interested in the in their goods, not in their bad. It's it's not my duty to pinpoint their weaknesses. It's my it's my job. It's my pride to make sure that the positives come through and they shine really well. So if I if I make my team feel very proud and very happy every day, they are likely to produce winning food every day. If I'm a chef who makes them makes them feel bad and belittle them every day, my kitchen is going to be a terrible place to eat from. So I, I think it's it's the leadership quality that gets you the Michelin star. Thank you, Chef. Sagar, you can ask the question. We his mic is giving issue. Uh, we have a student from a third year asking a question. Uh, if we have four or five star rest, four or five restaurant, how can we keep or give the same taste of food to every guest coming in each restaurant? How do you standardize the food? So, uh, you know, if you were you're running a QSR, it wouldn't be a problem, I guess. Uh, but if you're running a fine um, yes. there is a challenge. And that, yeah. that training comes into play. That's where team yeah. comes into play. Team. So I have often been an advocate of uh, covering the team. So my, I, I have five restaurants. can relate to that. Exciting. Like how to keep all of the uh, menus changing all the time uh, to make sure that team. And for that, you have to empower it. The, the head chef who's leading from the front, strength you got to uh, you you got to give him much as as good as you can give him belief that he can do. Uh, that and uh, yeah, we, that's how I run my Michelin, Michelin guide year after three years. So we get my, team, my team. I think it's. I I. The team I don't again. think you want to go. Uh, because standardizing would be a standardized uh, kind of gets cut and and the system takes where where the creativity. Quality of food you want to buy. Yes, yes you do need it to uh, what what kind of uh, drinks what? you you want to purchase. But when it comes to creativity, you cannot standardize it there, and you have to give them wings. Yeah, there is a standard that you can't fall below that. But how to uh, perform above that is something I, I look at. Next question, please. Timothy, you had a question. You can speak up also, Samit. Hi, good evening. Uh, good evening, Chef. Chef, my question is for you. What did you like the best about the ex education experience? And what did you like the least? What did I like about my education? Uh, it was a fantastic time of my life. Uh, I, I think and I... Uh, and, and my entire education was fantastic. Going into this way, my and then to joining uh, over school college was one of the highlights of my career, uh, of my educational career. The best thing I liked about uh, working for Obra Hotels was that I was being paid to learn. Uh, you know, I all I had to do was work incredibly hard and learn lots and lots of skills, and I was getting paid for that. And the worst thing is, it lasted very short. I wish it was slightly longer. Uh, so, you know, while while your uh, parents' bank is paying you to learn, I think you should make most of it. Learn as much as you can. The day you get out there in the industry and you have to earn your every meal and also learn on the side, you will find the life is very difficult. So, honestly, learn as much as you can in the current environment. Thank you, Chef. Next question, please.
I didn't want to read that one. <clears throat> you can unmute and ask your questions, please. May I ask? Yeah, sure, sir. Please. Uh, good evening, sir. This is Ayush Sharma. Hi. My question for you is that um, what did your Michelin star bring to you in terms of business? Very good question. So before before us, um, uh, before I got the Michelin star, there was no other Indian restaurant that had received the Michelin star uh, among Indian chefs. <clears throat> so it it was it was a bit of a bit of a shock to be honest. I it it took several weeks for me to recover from that because I I wasn't looking for one. I wasn't hoping for one, but it just came because Michelin felt that we were cooking at that level. Uh, the category of the guests changed quite heavily. I always struggled to, uh, in Europe, uh, I'm sure slowly it gets, it's getting in India too, but in Europe that time, and I'm going back to 2001, uh, people would come to Indian restaurants, eat what they wanted to eat, uh, drink lots and lots of beers uh, or a few cocktails here and there and leave. So there was there was no room for selling great wines. And in Europe, if you have a restaurant, uh, wines among, among the beverage sale, wines make at least 50-60% of it. In, in some restaurant cases, it's even 80%. So, and the, the entire beverage uh, ratio is approximately 40%, six, 60 food and 40 beverage. So not to have that good 20 to 30% or 100% used to hurt the restaurant quite a lot. So suddenly the profile of the clientele changed. People started looking at Indian food in a very different manner. And they, they started coming there for experience. People used to come to Indian restaurants for uh, getting a fix. Uh, it's a Friday night, it's a curry night, let's go out. Uh, but then suddenly everything changed and our restaurants were as busy on Monday as they were on Fridays and Saturdays. So it, it was a major perception change uh, for British people. And I think worldwide as well, that uh, Indian food was taken more seriously than ever was. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Chef. Next question, please. Adarsh has a question. Um, how a young chef should prepare himself or herself for successful career in the field of culinary? I think uh, um, young chef, I, I could tell you that what, what I did, and uh, you, it's up entirely up to you. Learning is what, what gets you, okay? So I, I follow a lot of young chefs in, uh, in, in India and also here in the UK. So the only difference I'll tell you uh, between between the two categories of chefs, uh, these young people, is in, in India, we, we are too consumed. And I'm, I'm not taking a stab at young Indian chefs. I'm just pointing out the difference. The young chefs in India, they're quite happy to go to their jobs, what they have, and practice their culinary skill where they are working. And then... You know they are they are happy to just go back home and settle in and also play on Instagram and watch videos and do whatever they want to, but in Europe, uh, these, these young chefs they would work their back backside off five days because the working hours are incredibly long in the week. Some some of the open five in the morning to the afternoon. That's how it is, and five days like that. But still, they manage to muster the strength on their to have the margin in different other to go and, and learn more skills because they have found it out in front of them that they are 21, 22, 23, whatever they are. And they're going to give themselves another five to eight years to work their way through. So, come 30, their aim is to be a head chef in a Michigan restaurant, and most of them do achieve it. To have their own, and they, they go on the back of because they have taken so much knowledge, they have absorbed so much knowledge, and that I think lacks in India. We, we don't do that in India, or we don't motivate our youngsters to do that enough. And I think that should be the message. You should you should train more. Training is the word, guys. As much the more you, the more hours you can put in training, 
the better you're going to be. It's it's a practicing skill. You know, uh, when when I was growing up, uh, my parents. I used to hear my parents talk about it often that. There's a new doctor in town, and there's an old doctor in town, and they would always go to the old doctor in town, not to the new doctor in town, because the old doctor had more experience. So it's all about experience. So it, I, I, these these two fields resonate with me, to be honest. So the more you experience, the better you're going to be. And one more thing, I'll tell the young chefs who want to improve their culinary skills: just don't get stuck into making money or saving money or earning money. Spend some money on yourself. Go out. Eat in few fantastic places, whatever your money can buy, because every meal gives you an experience as well. You will learn so much. Even if you go and uh, eat at Haldi Ram, check out his chole kulche. If you go and eat out in one of the most posh restaurants in town, check out their culinary skills. Learn something from them. Walk away. Just don't say money like that. Just for free that your your mouth had fun. No, your senses should have fun. You you should enjoy what you what you're spending money on. We have so much to ask question as well. Do you want to ask a question? Uh, Anujama, please speak up. Yes, may I ask? Chef, what inspired to be a chef? Hello? Yes, Hello. yes ma'am. Yeah, I can hear you. Stop. Chef, what ins inspired to you be a chef? Uh, so when, when I was growing up, the, the, the traditional professions which were available in front of me to be either a doctor or an engineer, uh, or all go to uh, I because I grew up in Jamshedpur. All, all work for uh, Tata Company. Uh, work in the steel plant. So those are the four or five traditional professions available to me, and I decided not to do any of those. Uh, I had admission in medical school, but I defied that. I said I'm not going to go to medical school. I had sat for hotel school. Uh, the reason I sat for hotel school uh, were few. Uh, there were few people on the way who motivated me to do uh, what I'm doing today, and the first one was my father. My father was a self-taught chef. Uh, he ran a small catering business. Uh, so I looked at him. The passion he used to talk about food and the ingredients used to get me going. I used to love listening to his story. Uh, my grandfather was a baker. So, uh, I, I saw, my, which was my nana, my mother's dad. And uh, by the time I came into this world, he was wrapping up his business. So I didn't see much of it. But whatever little I remember, was very passionate that you know baking bread is is a very noble profession in my opinion and it feeds the masses and and the experience you get standing in a bakery you don't get it anywhere in the world uh, and then I met a, a lady uh, her name was uh, Mrs Surti she had two sons uh, she worked she was she was in HR department with uh, Tata's in Jamshedpur she had two sons and they both were in hospitality they both were one was studying and other one had already graduated and working for Tata. I got to meet these young people that time and started listening to their stories, things they were studying, things they were doing, things they were cooking, and that motivated me. And my father, on everything, on top of everything, my dad told me one thing: that, and in those days, you didn't change professions the way young people can do it now. Uh, you are fortunate, but we couldn't do it because you have to choose one profession and stick to it all your life. And my father said, whatever profession you choose, remember you're going to wake up with it every morning. You will not have opportunity to go back. And undo it and start all over again. So, I consciously I decided that I'm going to go to hotel school and I'm going to take the trip. So, year, in year one, you know, I had my agenda clear that why I was here and what I want to do. So I was driven. Let's put it this way: I I made my uh, target very clear that where I want to go. Perfect. Thank you. Chef, may I ask? Yeah, please, am. Yes. Good evening, Chef. I am Adam Paul. I am in third year right now. Uh, so, Chef, it's my last year. I am a bit confused that after this, I should uh, directly enter the industry, or I was also planning that uh, I can do post graduation in culinary arts and then I can enter the industry. So, I am a bit confused um, in it. Uh, look, uh, I I didn't do. 
with the okay. digestion, so I, I I'll not be able. To experience. I'll be you very honest. Gives you, I've got no experience. My my suggestion here would be even if you got Houston to, uh, and I'm pretty sure you go for post. Assuming your evenings will be free, I think you should step into the industry in whichever okay. form you wish to, uh, and start practicing sooner the better. And also, the people who are studying at the moment. So I I just want to share a part of my story that when I studied in Chennai, and it was part financial or. My parents couldn't afford to pay my fee properly uh, because we were going through financial uh, tough uh, times at home. So I to to pay my fee, I used to work in a restaurant in the evenings. So I used to finish my college at three three thirty, and then I used to head out. There was a restaurant, Chinese restaurant in Chennai called Cascade, and I started as a kitchen porter and then slowly learned the trade and got onto the stoves and I, I became a full budget cook by the time I left, and that taught me a lot. Not only it paid some money to me to pay my fee and uh, look after my education, but it gave me an amazing experience uh, in the kitchen, which which kind of became very handy later for me. Thank you, Chef. Next question. You're very welcome, Paul. We have a question from Anuj coming in, uh, Chef. By your experience at the stage of our hotel management courses. What is your advice for us at this point and the time becoming a chef? I didn't. Know. If he wants to become a chef, but he should be targeting right now. He's in second year right now, okay. and he wants to be a chef. I, I, so he wants to know what he should start doing right now. I I think you know. Uh, first of all, education because that's very important. One thing you you have to do is uh, job as much as you can, as I said earlier as well. So learn learn the skill and the trade and the basics as much as you. Can in the school, because the facility you have in in the school at the moment that you are surrounded by some amazing teachers, some amazing people who have worked in the industry and come back to share that experience with you. So make the most of it while you are here, and keep your target open that you you want to go for a kitchen and you want to work towards that. But if you are left with any time, or you know if you have only one uh, one or two days in the week. Where you could go and work with uh, a hotel restaurant or or a standalone restaurant in the evenings, I think you should do that. You should try your hands out. You will know where you stand. It it might turn out that you hate it and you don't like it. So at least you will have time to kind of change your direction. That if you hate the kitchens, then you would know where to go. Next question, please. Anyone? Chef, I have a question. Good evening, Chef. My Good question evening. to you is: As London, um, do you keep the spices low, and if so, how do you retain retain its flavor? Sorry, I, your question wasn't very clear to me. Say again. Yes, she wanted as to ask a uh, while prepared. Sorry, say again, Chef. Uh, okay, Anne, I I'll ask, or you wanted to ask? No, no, Chef, you ask. Okay, she's saying that while preparing your Indian food, uh, you do you keep the spices uh, low? And if yes, then how will you manage to get uh, a lot of flavor uh, without the spices or less of with less of spices? Uh, you when 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 she's asking whether whether I keep the spices low in terms of where I cook in London, uh, what, was that her intention? That yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay. Not really. I I I cook the way I cook, to be honest. So one one of the things I learned is, uh, and I have a huge respect uh, for uh, for uh, European chefs. What I learned, one of the skills I learned, and I I was very fortunate to work for uh, work with a couple of uh, European chefs while working for Obra Hotels. That you don't mask the flavor and the texture of the main ingredient you are cooking. Uh, no matter what seasoning or spicing you're putting, they should be assisting the dish, not overtaking the dish. So one of the big problems I find uh, among uh, a lot of Indian uh, culinarians, you know, fellow chefs, as well, I would say, that we we overwhelm people with the spices, and you're not supposed to do that. So if if you are cooking, uh, and I'll I'll take a very simple example of a lentil, you're making chana dal. If the flavor of chana dal is not going to come through, and you're going to mask it with the flavor of ghee and all the powdered spices you're going to put, you're defeating the purpose. So learn learn to respect the ingredient because 
if ingredient cannot talk about itself, then what are we cooking? Thank you, Chef. Any other question? Thank you, Chef. Yes, sir. I had a question. Uh, my question is, what are you looking at during service to keep up the level for Michelin star restaurant and how are you going about menu planning? What, what I'm looking at... Sorry, Upasana, say again. And, uh, I meant like what are the things that you're keeping in mind while during service and okay. uh, what are the things that are being kept in mind during menu planning as well? Okay, so there are two, two parts of the two questions basically so the first one is uh, how do i manage my service basically so uh, as a as a chef uh, i uh, the, the biggest biggest thing is uh, you know the timekeeping is very important so the kitchen management is very important because if kitchen slips the entire operation fails that evening so uh, if if i'm the past master and i'm looking after it so i want to make sure that all the tickets are in order uh, all the orders are uh, barked in the kitchen in the right time. Uh, and, and the time is uh, of essence, to be honest. So you've got to make sure that the status of each and every table leaves between 10 to 15 minutes from the ordering. Uh, the main courses should leave in another 10, 15 minutes from the being asked, called off. Uh, and then the dessert chef has its tickets in, in time to make sure that things are flowing properly. So I think managing kitchen is the most important thing. And then on the pass, uh, making sure that each and every plate is looking pristine and spectacular and to the standard we had set. Uh, nothing is missing in terms of garnish. And once in a while, I, I take out my tasting spoon and make sure that I taste in between to make sure that we, we are doing the right thing. So these, these are the usual stuff. These are routine stuff which we do. And you have to keep a very keen eye on everything. But be a, a restaurant owner I keep a very keen eye on the floor as well so once in a while I slip out of the kitchen and go to the floor and make sure that guests are comfortable they're having a good time uh, managers are doing a good job waiters are roaming around and doing what they're supposed to do uh, the wine support and the water water is topped up I think all, all those are the basic stuff which I do as, as a restaurant owner uh, but the most and the foremost thing is the well-being of all my employees is, is paramount, and I always keep a very keen eye on that during the service. Now, when it comes to uh, menu planning, I, I don't set uh, a kind of strong rule to it that how I'm going to go about doing menu planning. I work with nature a lot, and whatever is in season, I, I get excited about it and then decide my dishes that where we are going. And at any given time, we don't change the menu uh, 50 or 60%. It's always tweaked throughout the year. So uh, we are in spring now. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm looking to, unfortunately, we are closed at the moment. Uh, but, sorry. <clears throat> but during this time of the year, I'm looking to work with salmon, asparagus, um, different types of vegetables which will come in the market. So this, this, is, this is a very exciting time in terms of culinary calendar. But so is autumn, because in autumn, I'm looking forward to mushrooms and all the root vegetables. So <clears throat> there's never ending. It's, it's an ongoing process. Thank you. <clears throat> plans to uh, redesign the menu uh, post pandemic or will it be the same? Uh, <clears throat> haven't reached that far, to be honest, but we may have to. Uh, it's a very valid point uh, because uh, we, our, our, our lockdown is also extended until May, and I got a feeling that there will be another extension coming. So by the time we go back to the kitchens, it'll be June or mid-June. So <clears throat> I have to look into it, that what, what we'll get uh, during that time of the year. Uh, but yes, it, it's always seasonal. And uh, my, my advice to my chef is uh, keep the food seasonal. It's so easy to cook seasonal food because... Mother Nature has done 80% of the job, and I have to work only 20% uh, to give the true excitement and pleasure to the guests. Any other uh, questions? Yes, sir, I have. Yes, sir. Hello, good evening. Good evening. I am Nishat Sama from second year. Uh, I have a question that uh, what is the most loved or hated dish for you? Most loved or hated? 
most loved and most hated that's what you asked for yeah this <laughs> yes sir okay <clears throat> what i love most uh very hard to say uh, but i i think i as as a punjabi boy i love my rajma most <laughs> and it's more <laughs> okay okay and what i hate most i uh, i did a tv series and went to malaysia and i was made to eat insects that that's what i hate the most and never, never again i'm going to do that okay thank you sir you have a question hello chef chef i have a question yeah yes sir okay. go ahead turn up go ahead chef what's your go to meal when you are low on time when i'm low on time, time. low on time uh, yeah. nothing beats nothing beats a good khichdi always put a smile on my face and get me there in time chef so you made it on a regular basis or like uh, once in a week or twice in a week like that Uh, th- there is no routine to it. Uh, you know, if time is short, uh, I would just make it. Yeah. As a matter of fact, last night <clears throat> we were planning a big meal, and we weren't feeling uh, up to it. My wife said, "I'm definitely not doing cleaning," and I, I didn't put my name as the kitchen porter yesterday night. So we decided to make a khichdi, and it was it. That was it. Chana dal ki khichdi we had, and just some yogurt and pickle. Put the smile on everyone's face, and everyone went to bed very happy. <laughs> yes thank you so much sir thank you next question anyone uh chef uh how do you keep your employees motivated million dollar question <clears throat> uh, <laughs> you know different people have different motivations right uh, it's not always money uh, that's yeah. one thing i'll tell you that okay Uh, these days uh, i i what i advocate most is uh, people well being and the mental health is very very important and we we all have mental problem whether we like it or not we, whether we accept it or not we all do you know from time to time you get flu and you get cough we all get these mental trauma and that's a mental health issue and we need to address it we should not let that go unnoticed so one thing which i do is i i I maintain a, a kind of a very loving relation uh, in most of my businesses, and I make sure that I set aside little time in my diary every day to catch up with few employees on one-to-one basis, because that gives me a great understanding of their well-being and their mental health. And if I pick up any issue in their in their in their life or even on on their mental stamina. I like to address it, and that that is helping you. And I've done this for last five odd years, and it has always helped me to connect to my people very well. What I've found is my uh, staff is a lot happier, and they they come and open up more easily with me. So <clears throat> I would say that it's not always money. It's it's yes, money is one issue, but that is with everybody. You know, I if I bump into Mr. Ratan Tata, he will also say I have issue with money. uh so do i uh, so but i i think beyond money there there are a lot of other issues which on the human level we should address it and we should look after it for each other thank you chef next question anyone good evening chef uh this is garvit sajdeva from third year hi garvit uh so i've been running a small kitchen in gurgaon you are already an entrepreneur Yes, I am doing it from last uh, six to two months, and uh, it's going quite well. But I've seen uh, that uh, in India, what's happening is people have been pulling money out of, like, as in investors, they are uh, they are pulling money out of the uh, food industry business. Like Ravi, no, Ravi, I'm not getting your voice very clearly. So what's happening in India right now? Yeah. people are like investors are pulling their money out of the business 
out of fnb business at the moment yes at, not at the moment like i've seen this this trend is coming from last 2 3 years and when you say pulling money out of it means that they are they are wrapping up they're and not, they are not they're not investing. investing as in like they are they FNB. are not ready yes they are not ready to invest in the business okay and uh, i wanted to know like is it the same scenario in london or maybe europe i uh, i was in europe too i was in france for a year and i was working as a like i had my internship in hotel la perouse nice so, so uh, why people are you know um, why would people pull out money from from an investment if the investment was doing well that's first question okay so if oh. sorry you're saying garu no no uh, please continue okay so uh, you know any investor who would put money into a business uh, his aim is to not only get, not only to get the capital back but also get some profits and it's a, it's a very common thing that that's how commerce works that's how business works and if somebody is not making money of of course they'll say okay i will fold in and i will cut my losses so that i don't have to put more money in so i i don't know whether it's a very generic thing but what i have noticed is uh recently and i have you know i have operated in india myself and i i folded my restaurants two years ago uh, in 2018 january i folded two two of my restaurants in mumbai uh, but my reason was very different my location went wrong uh, but i i i couldn't pinpoint that why would people on generic basis would pull money out because i know a lot of restaurants uh and and they are serial restaurants they have they have restaurants across india and they are still on the spending spree they are still opening restaurants so when you guys go in in the market and you you want to open your own or you want to attract investment to open your own uh, open for somebody and you want an investor or promoter to come in and put money into it what you need to prove to them is uh, a you have the knowledge and the and the science behind it that how you're going to make it work and through your hard work and through your skills you got to make it work for that person because if he is putting his uh savings and his life and his money into your hand he deserves to get the returns to be honest and if he's not going to then people will pull money out and if i was in their shoes i would do the same uh, it's not being ruthless about it but then comes a time when you say okay i have to cut my losses and wrap up and go yeah that that's true that's true um i would totally agree with that Perfect. Thank you, sir. Have You're welcome, sir. Good luck. There, with on a Netflix, there is a series of this show wherein the investors goes to uh, the young people and they kind of uh, run a restaurant for a day, and then probably they'll decide at the end of the meal whether they have to invest in that particular business or not. So probably mm-hmm. you'll get a better idea uh, in that uh, video on Netflix. And then he can also see the Shark Tank. Yeah, Shark Tank. I I I do watch Shark Tank. Yeah. So what 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 your chef was saying is that that program is called Million Pound Menu. Million Pound it's, Menu. It's, yeah, it's from BBC, and uh, uh, I I participated in that. But there are several other investors, so you will get to see a mindset of different people across the board because hospitality industry is so big. So there were some hoteliers, there were some chain restaurant, the QSR owners. and uh, there were some individual owners and then there were chefs like me who who just wanted to pick one or two only so you you will you will see the whole spectrum of it it's an interesting program okay thank you chef good luck any other question <coughs> yes sir uh, hello hi chef. am i audible chef yes. i can hear you chef again like this topic has been raised about entrepreneurship and investments so this question is not regarding food production skills or anything regarding food production this is again addressing the issue of entrepreneurship so like uh, this is kind of a personal question so how Go did on. you address the capital requirements when you started a restaurant like you're a businessman and how did you fund your restaurants So uh, my first restaurant Banaras was uh, funded by uh, two of uh, the regular guests at Tamrind okay so I I had by that time I had got the Michelin star and uh, there were a lot of interest 
And I, I had worked at uh, Tamarind for eight years by then. So, and I was very reluctant to move on. I, I was quite happy in my position, uh, very happy with the owners of Tamarind. And they were, they were great, kind people, and they looked after me incredibly well. I was very fortunate, let's put it this way. So I asked them a very honest question. I said, look, uh, I have come to a crossroad in my life and where uh, either I can go into business uh, or I could continue to work for you. But should I continue to work for you? And if I did, would I get any shares in the business? And the answer came back very quickly and it was no. I said, you know, you, you, you're very welcome to stay all your life and work with us. We are very happy to, but we will not be able to part with any shares because we want to keep it as a family business. So I, I knew what I had to do from there on. And sometimes it's actually quite easy and quite right to ask tough questions because if you don't, then you wouldn't know where you stand and you don't, you don't need to lurk around unnecessarily. And that's exactly what I did. So I had these two investors who were willing to uh, put some money and they wanted me to put some money. So I, we, we, three of us, got together and we had enough money to start the first restaurant, which became my first restaurant called Benares. Uh, and that's how I started my first first gig. And then uh, as Benares got better and uh, financial returns started coming in, uh, I, I started setting money aside because those other two were professional investors. They were bankers and they wanted to take their money home and not do anything else. But I wanted to expand. So I... I asked them if I would like to open more restaurants, and they said, we have no intentions of, but you can if you want to. So with my own money, I started opening more restaurants. So today I have four of my own restaurants. Uh, I left Panaras. I, I sold my shares in 2018 and moved on, uh, which has given me ability to uh, join another big group because uh, opening restaurants in London would be uh, a lot more expensive, so I needed a bigger investment there. So where I, I command a, a controlling stake in the business, but... Other people are there who who have invested money in that company, but I have the other other four restaurants I have out of town. I own them outright with my family money, uh, which is me and my wife's money, and we we run those places ourselves. So you know th there are different ways to do it, and it's it's like any other business. If you want to approach and invest, you need to have a business plan, uh, you need to have projections, uh, and you need to prove it that this business will work and there will be returns at the end of it. Uh, and everybody is looking at a certain amount of uh, returns. And in my opinion, the returns in double digit is always uh, right because single digit returns are no good because people are not interested in five to 6% return these days. If you've got 10 to 15%, which is a sensible return in my opinion, at least in Europe, I can say, uh, and uh, investors are generally happy to put money into such projects, provided you have a proven track record that you've done it before. So before you young guys jump into doing business and take risks, either burn your own money or your parents' money, my sincere advice would be to go and work for somebody for some time. Spend good three to five years working for others. Learn the skills, make the mistakes, because you're making those mistakes on somebody else's expense. Uh, then come back and then do your own thing. So you want to know what are the strategies to adapt when you want to set up a restaurant and approve the competition in the market. Is that was the question? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when you're when you're setting up the restaurant, so uh, f first and the foremost thing is that you need to have a business plan. Okay. So make a business plan, and then what's your USP? Why are you going to be so different from others? What what? Why would people come to you? Uh, you are setting up this place, and is there a need in the market? There are already two hundred restaurants in the surrounding, and you are putting two hundred one. Why do you? Why do people need you? So you you got to prove that point first, okay? And then if you have the USP, you have the skill, and you have the knowledge, you have the money, uh, then the location. And I I would put location above all of these. That location should be first because I personally have gone wrong uh, choosing the location when I came to India to open my restaurants. I 
I had I picked up a terrible location, no money for it, uh, and failed. So part of life anyway. The location, your your concept, and your business plan. These are the three things you got to have, and uproot the competition. I don't know how good that is. You know, I I, I don't live in India, Diksha, but my my view would be competition is always good. I if there is a competition in the market, I want to be in that market because it makes me so much more better. I don't want anyone's shop to close. I want everyone's shop to be open, but I want to make sure that my product is way above theirs in a much better way. So if you if you have confidence in your product and in your service and in your knowledge, you 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 are winning anyway. Why worry about uprooting anyone? Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Sorry, you want to ask some question? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I uh, I want to uh, know your take on uh, restaurant critics. Like, what do you think about them, and you know, uh, what's your uh, thinking about them? I think uh, restaurant critics are important for us, to be honest. Uh, you know, as as a as a restauranter, uh, we could become complacent. Uh, we we may only see our benefit into it, our our angle only, and sometimes these people are coming from different walks of the life. Not necessarily they are from the trade. They they are looking at it from a different angle altogether, and they actually do a favor to you by criticizing you. Uh, they pinpoint you that those things are not right and they could be better. So what they do for you actually, and we should be actually quite grateful to them. Uh, some of, some of them are vicious, no doubt about it. But I would say most of them actually do a favor to you by telling you what's missing, and it helps you to improve your product. So I'm I'm all for it, to be honest. I I don't take any offense on anybody saying whatever they want to say about my product. Right, sir. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Any more questions? Chef, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, sir, what are the qualities you look at a person while hiring a fresher? I don't. I think I answered that first as well. Uh, I, I look for passion. I look for passion in people uh, and and their uh, their basic skills. Incredibly important. And if if you're coming to join the kitchen, then in that case, I do ask to prepare a vegetarian meal for me and my sous chefs, so that we can judge you better. Thank you, sir. Any more question? Good evening, uh, Chef. I have a question. Yes, yes. What is that ingredient that you have never worked with and wish to try that in your restaurant menu? The ingredient I have never worked with. There are lots of ingredients I have not worked with, to be honest. And I, I won't say that they are necessarily from uh, Indian cuisine repertoire. There could be several. Several. You know, I I have not worked with. Uh, Something like insects in my in my food, uh, but they are fast becoming mainstream. A lot of chefs are introducing insects in their meal, in their in their experience, and I am reluctant to. And then uh, there are a lot of uh, fungus, different types of fungus that I use. I've not used them before, and I would be very keen to see how I could use best of truffles in Indian food one day. But the problem with truffle is. It clashes with any Indian spice I know. Uh, so while I love that, I, I don't see room for it in my kitchen. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Any other question? Chef, one question: How important is showmanship for a chef? Does he has to be a showman, or up to what level? Uh, you know, uh, restaurant industry is a part of entertainment industry, in my opinion. So uh, one one has to have a little bit of charisma and also to be able to kind of give people entertainment. So I I met this chef. Uh, he was in his sixties or early seventies, perhaps. He had come to India. He was a French chef. From, it was a two Michelin star friendship. He had come for a promotion to uh, La Rochelle restaurant that was I was looking after that restaurant in Dubrovnik, New Delhi. And uh, all those fifteen days he cooked with us, he was actually hardly there in the kitchen. 
So he he had a head chef who was amazing. He managed that, but he himself, the chef was always in the dining room. And the fear he spoke to people, the passion and, and all the drama around him, I was totally mesmerized. I, I don't remember what I ate from him, to be honest, but I remember his personality really well. So I, I think, yes, it is important in a lot of ways. But I think overacting can be sometimes very difficult and it can, may, not be, may not be recommended in my opinion. But yes, to, to approach the subject with the knowledge and to be able to convince people that what you have done is absolutely right is a part of showmanship. And I think it's required and everybody should acquire that a bit of it. Chef, I saw that book called Noma, which is also lying at the bookshelf behind. So the oh, question is based yeah. <laughs> uh, how, yeah, it's there. So uh, is, it, is it okay to, uh, to shut down a restaurant which is already doing a very good business and uh, a Michelin star and suddenly closing it down and because you're just not feeling well about the menu or you're just not feeling well about what you're serving to the guest. And the restaurant is like full cover, giving you a lot of uh, ROI. So what is your take on this? So you know, uh, people like Rene and uh, Chef Farad Adria they are very special people. Uh, they are a different breed of culinary artists, in my opinion. So none of them actually work for money. They, they work for their passion all the time. Till date, that's what they do. So putting basics on the table, uh, monetary need is not something to them. I think what what is that I think in Iran's himself is dead. I I don't want to be seen as the padre of molecular gastronomy. I want to shut my shop and move on and do things or maybe take it easy in life. And that's what he has done. Why did Rene close his restaurant in between? I think he wanted to go back and inspire, get inspired. He wanted to go and spend some time with nature. So, and I think that's what exactly he did. He went to uh, Mexico and Brazil, and he spent a lot of time there, uh, learning about new ingredients, new techniques, uh, making new friends, living pretty, pretty basic, shoddy places he was living in, to be honest. Uh, so, I, I, I quite admire and love him, to be honest. I think he, he's quite a reformer uh, in, in our world. So the, the book you see, I, I actually didn't buy that book. I, I, I did a TV show with him. Uh, he gave me as a gift. And I said, thank you for giving me as a gift because I was never going to buy it because I can't cook from your food at all. So he, 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 he wrote a lovely message on the book and we had a good laugh. So I, I think uh, his... His mission is very different, sort of. He he's a very ingredient and the technique led chef. And when he feels that he's suffocated or he's repeating himself a bit too much, he shuts down and goes away on 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 the rediscovery journey again. So he didn't do it on once. He has done it twice now, and twice. I expect him to do many more times. Oh my god! Okay. Any other questions? Anyone? When are you the most happiest at work? All the time. If I'm unhappy, I pack my bags and come home. Uh, because unhappy chef makes the entire kitchen unhappy. And I've kept that rule. So anybody I find grumpy in my kitchen, I don't, I don't push them. I just say, go home today. You'll be happier tomorrow. So if I can afford to send that person home, I do that. So if you guys come to work for me, don't come unhappy to my work purposely. Okay, how would you? Sorry, I didn't read that question. So, how would can you... the aftermath? Sorry, I just repeat. How would be the aftermaths on the tourism and hotel industry after COVID nineteen situation? Will it change the travel and dining trends? I, you know, it's a it's a very good question, but unfortunately, I have no answer for it. To be honest, I think I'm on the same boat as you guys are. 
Uh, one thing is for sure that I, I watch the financial news very carefully, uh, which relates here to me in, in the UK. And this morning, our chancellor, uh, our finance minister, said that our economy is going to contract. Uh, and if it contracts in third quarter also, then we are in for losses of 35%, which is, which is in line with the Great Depression of 19th century. So we don't know, guys, to be honest. It's, it's very tough to predict anything. None of us have got crystal ball in our hand. So we are all hoping for good. And uh, only one thing I know, and that is to remain positive and happy. And I'm going to maintain that. And whatever the circumstances may be, I know I will strike back with a full force and I'll work with, my, with everything I have. Oh, thank you so much, sir. Finally, let's wrap up the session. We have our director, Vitaal, with us. So, Laura, sir, would you like to address? Sure. Very good afternoon, uh, Chef Kocha. How are you? It's good to I'm have good. you. Good. 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 Thank you for your time. It was really a great, uh, great moment that we spent with you. I just thank want you. to summarize a bit, if you have a minute more to spare with us, then... Uh, Absolutely. I just wanted to, to thank you very much. First, there is something that I really, really love that you said is that success is a journey, not a destination. And I think that should be something that our students should remember because it's, uh, it's a nice phrase, actually. I don't know if it's from you. I hope, I'm sure it is, but uh, you should write it somewhere. Right. Because you should copyright it, actually. It's, it's, it's really <laughs> nice. It, it, was, it was my father's phrase, so I've often used that. Okay, so as, as I could say, I could tell that your father was a very wise man uh, as per the conversation we've, we've been having today. Uh, another thing that I noted, I think uh, I've called it the three rules and I think they are yours, uh, is the passion, the hard work and the experience. And I think what you're trying to say is that the mix, uh, the right mix of all this makes uh, success for, for everyone and obviously a chef. Uh, like you or, or the aspiring chefs we have in our school. So I think that's something they should remember and hard work for sure is, 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 is essential to succeed. So that also I thank you for uh, inspiring us with these words because that's something quite important. I think you also uh, praised the uh, structure education and you said how important it was, uh, not over the, the training, but you needed at least maybe 75, 30, 75, 25, or 70, 30 of structure education. And then of course, that experience bit. Uh, so that I think also was, was a good, uh, wise suggestion of yours. Uh, I was happy also to, heard, uh, to hear that uh, molecular gastronomy was dead. I was very happy to hear that. <laughs> it filled me with joy. Uh, also, something you said, and I think it's very important in, in terms when when it comes to cooking, is that uh, uh, the importance of the ingredients and how you should protect the ingredients and how you work with your spices in order to always keep the ingredients the king and and the rest is coming to help and and elevate the ingredients. So uh, that also was a was an interesting uh, thing you said. Uh, we felt a lot of uh, empathy from you. Uh, you, you I, I like the way you, you said that you were going to look after your customer as an owner. Our chef or owner should take that ownership and go to his customers, but also how you take care of your staff and how you empower them, train them, uh, in order to have a, a running kitchen, uh, which is like uh, uh, as close as possible as the... Uh, 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 as perfection in order to please your customers and uh, that was also nice i i really like the take on on the fact that you talk to your people to your staff that work with you and that you make sure that they actually happy and feel good and i think that's probably the recipe uh, for business to to uh, to be successful uh, also you talked about business how the star michelin lead you led you to a lot more how it, it brought more footfall in your restaurant and how it pushed your career forward and how you were able to find an investor. I really like the fact that you said that competition was healthy. I think also that it's something that all our students should keep in mind. Don't think that because there are 30 restaurants, yours won't work. It's because there are 30 restaurants that yours will be uh, also successful. So 
I think that was the yeah. interesting take also. Uh, that's pretty much what I took from, from all of this. And uh, I want to thank you again uh, uh, for your time, Chef, because uh, uh, we know you're busy, although right now nobody is really busy, but uh, still it's very sweet of you to have come and spend time with us. I want to uh, also uh, thank Saurav, Chef, for organizing this. I know he's uh, worked a lot on that. Dr. Garima, our dean, is always very uh, productive and uh, excited about doing all these things. And of course, our students, uh, who were uh, uh, nearly a hundred of them today online to uh, listen to you, Chef. So thanks to them. I hope they have taken your words and they have uh, uh, really listened to you very carefully. And I want to also uh, thank all our colleagues, uh, our you know, teaching faculty, all these people that make this happen and that, uh, you know, are on the front line every day and trying to inculcate to our students uh, the right things so that they, they, they end up in, in, uh, as good individuals and, and, and people who can perform in life and uh, have a great career in front of them. So uh, that's, that's it for me again, uh, um, you know, Daniela, and thank you very much indeed thank, thank for being with us. All the students and happy and safe time to you all. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Chef. Chef, one last question if you are still there. No. Yes. Guys, can you remember one minute? Guys, can you remember the students are on this talk? If we need to talk, we can come on a separate one. How can we come on a separate invite and we can discuss? Ah, please let's do this, now. Please, yeah, there are students. Let's go on a separate invite. Thank you. Just Thanks, give me two minutes. I'm removing the kids from here. Can we okay. go for another one? No, it's okay. Hello, bye, bye, sir. Bye, bye, sir. Bye, bye. Au revoir. Bye, sir. Bye, everybody. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, 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 sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, <laughs> sure, sir. Sure, sir. <laughs> Enjoy. Take care, everyone. Church keeper, sir. Church keeper, sir. Take care, take care. Take stairs, yes. Don't go for the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, sir. 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 Use Badana. Student, leave the meeting. Leave, you leave. Gaurav, Badana, leave. Everyone, just yes, sign sir. out. Sign out, sign out, everyone, beta. Thiga ji, thiga. Anand Tatna, Anik Singh. Archit, leave the meeting. Anand, Thiga. okay, man. Bye. Yes, Kaushik. Bye, bye. Another meeting is going on on this, so please leave and exit the meeting. Tapesh, leave. Piyush, Rohit, Saksham, Shubham. Bye, sir. An Anand, Anand, Anik. Hey, Shubham Gupta again. I think they are not on front of the system. I think they are not on front of the system. I think I I thought I had a hack in white. I have a big hack. 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 I
सुनील सर इनवाइटिंग यू टू वीडियो मीटिंग आया तो है अभी कहां पे आया यार जीमेल पे और सॉरी अपना कॉलेज आईडी पे अभी भी आया है 1 मिनट जस्ट बिफोर 1 मिनट हां आ गया आ गया आया था आया आया मीट I wanted to move into financial and education of 